Welcome back. So now that we have our first entity ready, we have the person entity ready, we're going to try and use it inside our data logic layer. And this time we're going to start out by making a contract and preparing to make a manager. And I'm going to call it a person manager. There are many names out there uh, that you can use, but I want to use the, the naming manager. So what I want to do this time is start out by making an interface, a contract of how a person manager should actually uh, act and, and work. What should we be able to do with a person manager? It's, so my, in my mind, I'm kind of thinking, as a program, what do I want to do with a person? And in this case, the, the very least is I need to somehow be able to read or get all persons from the database, right? I need to, from wherever they're stored. So that's the first thing I want to add inside an interface. And the guy who's going to know about how to handle this is going to be placed inside the data logic layer. He's going to be responsible for figuring out how to get all persons or how to do anything. And what I want to do is I want to start out by adding a new item here and that's going to be an interface this time. So adding item this time as an interface. And I'm just going to call it I as interface and then person manager. You can, again, the I is up for debate if you want to use one or the other. I've seen Microsoft using it a lot, so that's why I go with that. You could also call him just a person manager. Um, it's up to you. It's an interface and it knows that it's an interface, so it's, the naming is not that important, but there are different standards out there. Now the interface has to be public because it needs to be available outside the project, right? And what should the interface contain? Now, an interface is just a contract, meaning that an interface is very, very basic. It's very simple. All it should do is explain to you or whoever wants to use the interface, what can I do? Not how do I do it, just what can I do? And in our case, we at least figured out that we need to have some kind of method that returns a list of persons. So that's the goal here. We want to return a list of persons. But again, the person is not available. Stop the video and do it so that it is available. If you forgot, let me show you what it is. Um, we need to add the reference, of course. So it needs to have a reference for the app entities here. There we go. And now it actually can figure out what a person is. So if you forgot that one, just get it in there now, the reference. And this is going to be what we're going to return. And let's just call it get persons like this. You can put any name in there. Notice I don't have the implementation here. I just have the name, the contract of how the implementation should look, how the syntax is, how, how it looks when I want to implement this in my code. So let's just do a comment here. Always on your interface do comments because this is what other people, this is what the users of your interfaces see. So this is for getting all persons from, yeah, getting all persons, that's all I want to write here. You can put in more information if you want to in your system. So that's one thing we had to do. But I also want to be able to add a new person. So that's the other thing I want to do. I want to say, I want to return a person when he's added. And then I want to say add person, something like this. And I'm going to just send in the entire person from the outside. Now we could start discussing if that's the right way to do it, if, if we should send in the single properties as parameters. I'm just going to send in the person and then I'm going to make sure to protect myself on the back end so that the person cannot do bad things to me. Don't worry, I'll show you later how we can guide ourselves there. So now the interface is up and running. I still want to do a comment here, add a person using a person object. So we could um, have multiple ways to add persons. So you could also have your parameter list with persons if that's what you want instead. Good, we're all ready to, um, to end this lesson. That was creating your first interface. And next lesson we're going to try and implement it into a class so we use the interface. See you next time we work more with the interface.